So where are we going? It's a surprise. Pretty Woman was, and still is, one of the most classic romantic comedy movies ever made. The picture captures the hearts and admiration of hundreds of thousands of viewers, and it also played a huge role in catapulting the careers of many of its cast members, which includes, and especially, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. Besides its impressive lineup of cast, Pretty Woman told the story of an unlikely love and redemption, and for some reason, it really struck a chord with audiences. You're late. You're stunning. Inspiring more people to believe there was someone for them, regardless of their past. And in a time when social issues were as divisive as ever, Pretty Woman definitely hit a cultural nerve and became a pop icon. In this video, we'll be diving into the world of Pretty Woman, explaining some interesting facts about the movie that you might not have known. An Unexpected Love Story Pretty Woman was a rom-com released in 1990, directed by Gary Marshall. It told the story of Vivian Ward, an escort who had a pretty hard-knock life. Played by Julia Roberts, Vivian was eventually hired by Edward Lewis, a rich and successful businessman played by Richard Gere. While Edward only had hired Vivian for a weekend of companionship, while away on a business trip to Los Angeles, the two eventually became closer realizing that they could actually bridge the gap between their incredibly different worlds. Despite the many challenges they faced, Edward and Vivian were able to find common ground, and what do you know, feelings began coming into play. Like every other movie of its caliber, there are actually several secrets about Pretty Woman that have come out since its release, secrets that many of its die-hard fans might not necessarily have even known about. And so, let's dive into a few of them. Baby, I'm gonna treat you so nice, you're never gonna wanna let me go. Based on a true story. They say that art imitates life, and in the case of Pretty Woman, that definitely rings true. According to reports, the story for Pretty Woman was actually inspired by an article that J.F. Lawton read about a woman named Dawn Steele. Dawn had been working as a call girl in Hollywood, but eventually got married to a rich businessman and ended up becoming a filmmaker. Now, no one's really sure if the inspiration behind the movie is the same Don Steele who had founded the movie production company Steel Pictures, but still, the story of whichever woman he read appeared to have given Lawton the inspiration that he needed to make Pretty Woman. He added a little bit of Cinderella flair to the story, of course, but it seems that much of the storyline was indeed inspired by true events. Julia Roberts almost didn't get the part. Perhaps the most interesting fact about Pretty Woman was that Julia Roberts actually almost lost the leading role of Vivian Ward. Years later, after the movie had been released, it would be confirmed that the producers actually offered the leading lady role to Molly Ringwald instead. It's understandable, of course. Molly had already made a name for herself in Hollywood thanks to her roles in projects like Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club, being part of the infamous Brat Pack, so considering that the producers wanted an attractive woman to play the role of Vivian, it must have been a no-brainer to pick Molly. Sadly though, Molly Ringwald never really thought that she'd be perfect fit for the role. In a Reddit AMA session back in 2012, she would explain that she had gotten an early draft of Pretty Woman's script and didn't necessarily like what she saw. For one, the subject of sex work did not necessarily appeal to her, and she also described the script as something icky. The script was okay, but I gotta say, Julia Roberts is what makes that movie. It was her part, and every actor hopes for a part that lets them shine like that. And in more ways than one, she was right. At the time Pretty Woman was released, Julia was still a relatively new actress on the scene. She only had a few roles to her name, most of which were in small, low-budget productions. Despite all of this, though, she completely embodied her role as Vivian Ward, and easily became the movie's standout character. No disrespect to Richard, of course, but who knows? Perhaps Molly really could have played the character of Vivian in an alternate universe. The Hesitant Gear Speaking of casting choices, it was also confirmed that the role of Edward could have actually gone to another actor. As sources explained, Pretty Woman's filmmakers had an idea about who they wanted to star in the role of Edward, and Richard Gere pretty much fit the bill perfectly. But then they offered the role to him, and the actor turned it down repeatedly. According to sources, Richard was not necessarily interested in playing the role of a corporate raider, 
Plus, he apparently also thought the role was just a little bit too shallow for him, and so he decided to turn it down and focus on other things. But then, thanks to Julia's inclusion in the cast, he eventually changed his mind. In an interview from 2017, Julia explained that she had already signed on to play the role of Vivian. However, with Richard not being interested in the role of Edward, it became a bit difficult to find someone else. We couldn't find anybody that we wanted. Just not feeling like anybody really had what it took to play this incredible part that everybody wanted. As Julia would explain, the fact that the movie had been a romantic comedy meant that most of the choices they had seen were comedians, and both she and director Gary Marshall didn't necessarily feel like a comedian could give the role the type of seriousness that was required. Eventually, Marshall took Julia over to New York to meet Richard Gere, and this was kind of where things took off for the movie. We went over there and we talked to him. He was very nice. And then all three of us went out to dinner and... Um, had a great time, and he changed all of our lives forever by agreeing to do this movie. To be fair, though, Richard himself kind of remembered things a bit differently. Speaking on The Jonathan Ross Show, the actor would explain that he had indeed only taken the role because he met Julia and was fascinated by her. As soon as she walked in, it was, the, it was like a light bulb went off and the sun was on her. And she took a piece of paper from my desk and she wrote on it, please say yes. Oh. She turned it around, and I looked at it, and I went, yes. All in all, it's safe to say that Julia's role in convincing Richard Gere to play Edward had played a huge part in his eventually agreeing to come on board the project. And it definitely worked out for the best for the both of them. The Iconic Movie Poster Now here's another interesting fact that you may not have known. Remember that iconic promo poster for Pretty Woman? You know, the one where Vivian stands in that attractive pose and drags on the tie of a charming-looking Edward? Well, as it turns out, that poster was actually the work of Photoshop. According to reports, Julia had actually not been available for the promo poster photo shoot, and so the filmmakers simply had Shelley Michelle, her body double in the film, appear in the photo shoot instead. And then in post-production, they would use Photoshop to superimpose Julia's head on Shelley's body. Now, I know that you might actually not know this at first, but when you see the promo poster, you kind of can't unsee that little detail. Of course, this only goes to show that a lot of impressive work has been done in photo manipulation in the past. I mean, considering that this was back in 1990 and the manipulation was done so well, you have to give props to the editing team on that one. Another interesting fact about the movie poster was that Richard's hair was brown instead of its iconic gray color, which was seen all over the movie. Some people believe that the actor had just wrapped up filming for a different movie that had required him to dye his hair brown just before posing for the photo shoot. On the other hand, there's also a subset of fans who believe that the filmmakers had convinced Richard to dye his hair brown for the poster so that he could look slightly younger. Considering that Richard was 44 and Julia was only 23 at the time, I think that it kind of makes sense that the filmmakers would want him to look a bit younger compared to her. What do you think, though? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Skipped Continuity Errors Any experienced filmmaker will tell you that it's almost impossible to get everything right. I mean, we all remember the infamous mistake in Game of Thrones, where a cup of coffee being drunk by Amelia Clark made it onto the final shot, and when it comes to Pretty Woman, there were some continuity errors in the movie as well. Now sure, they might not have been noticeable to the average viewer, however, some eagle-eyed fans have noticed them in the past and shared them for others to see. One of the most prominent was the missing pancake mistake. At around the 31 minute mark in the movie, we see Edward and Vivian having breakfast after she had spent the first night at his place. The two appeared to have been dining on pastries, with Vivian picking up a croissant to eat. So what do you do? I buy companies. What kind of companies? Uh, I buy companies that are in financial difficulty. If they have problems, you must get them for a bargain, huh? Well, the company I'm buying this week, I'm getting for the bargain price of about one billion. A billion dollars? Yes. Wow. You must be really smart, huh? <laughs> I only got through 11th grade. 
However, after the camera switches to Edward's face and then back to Vivian, you can see that that croissant she was just eating had magically turned into a piece of pancake. How far did you go in school? I went all the way. Your folks must be really proud, huh? It doesn't stop there, though. If you notice, Vivian was having a second bite of the pancake when the scene cut from her face, but when it cut back, she appeared to still only have taken a single bite from the pastry. Sure, it's a pretty minor production error that you probably never even noticed if you've seen the movie before, but it's still a thing with movie errors. The moment that you see them, it's impossible to go back. An alternate title. Many filmmakers will relate to the struggle of finishing a script, making sure that it stays true to the vision they had for the movie, and then when it came to Pretty Woman, there were several things that had to be redone again and again to set things right. One of those would be the title, along with the entire script. According to reports, Pretty Woman wasn't actually the first title that filmmakers had in mind when they had imagined the project. Instead, they had planned to name the movie 3000, a reference to the amount of money that Edward paid Vivian when they first met and negotiated the price of her companionship. Interestingly, the movie had actually been greenlit as 3000, even to the point where the script initially sent to Molly Ringwald had the alternate title. Besides the title, the script for the movie was also quite different. According to sources, the script differed from the finished product that everyone saw in a number of key ways. First off, screenwriter J.F. Lawton had actually intended the initial script to be much darker. According to reports, the script was actually set to be a gritty commentary on the sex work industry in Los Angeles between the late 80s and early 90s. And speaking about the initial script, Richard Gere described it as very horrible and terrible story about two unlikable characters. Just as well, the character of Edward was actually written to be a junkie, not the suave and composed businessman that we all saw in the movie. I'm not really sure if Richard would have been the perfect man to play such a role, but who really knows? Finally, there's also that alternate ending, which was supposed to be quite dark. In the original script, Vivian's friend Kit was supposed to pass away due to her experience with substance abuse. And at the same time, while Vivian would have thought that she had something with Edward, he climbed up the tower and rescued her. She rescues him right back. He would have ended up throwing her out of his car, along with the money that he was supposed to pay her for the weekend. From there, he would drive off, leaving her alone in some dirty alley. Now you may be asking, how did a movie that was supposed to be so dark end up being so sweet? Well, the answer is simple. It comes down to cash. In an interview with Variety in 2019, Julia Roberts would explain that the small movie company that originally owned the rights to Pretty Woman ended up filing for bankruptcy. And as a result, Walt Disney Studios had bought the rights to the film, and they hired director Gary Marshall to save it. Considering that it was a Disney movie at that point, Marshall knew for sure that he couldn't leave the story as dark and gritty as it was, and so he and Lawton worked together to change the storyline and make it much more family-friendly. As a matter of fact, Lawton even once said in an interview that filmmakers had auditioned Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer, and as Lawton would explain, perhaps Pretty Woman would have seemed much more different if that casting option had been made. Lawton would go on to say that had they auditioned Al Pacino and Michelle Pfeiffer, it would definitely have been a different movie, but that the chemistry between Julia and Gear is palpable on the screen and in the auditions, and you can't really see how it would end any other way because they just lit up the screen with each other. And the rest, as they say, is history. Origins of the Famous Red Jacket In Pretty Woman, Julia Roberts wears several iconic and stylish pieces. However, perhaps the most popular piece of clothing she wore throughout the set was the red jacket. Vivian's red jacket was always with her. She wore it just before she met Edward for the first time and had it with or on her for a considerable part of the scene. Interestingly, that jacket itself has a bit of a fun story behind it. You may think that the jacket would be some expensive couture piece, but it was definitely not the case. According to sources, Gary Marshall had actually taken the blazer from a movie cinema usher before filming for Pretty Woman began. Marshall reportedly loved the jacket and thought that it would be a perfect addition to Vivian's street ensemble. 
It turns out that he more than nailed that decision, and for years, the ensemble, including and especially the red jacket, became popular among many women who wanted to look like Vivian Ward, especially on Halloween. And to date, you can still see many Vivian Ward Halloween costumes that feature the jacket. Who knew that something that reportedly cost only $30 would turn out to be such a cultural icon? Improv on display. Now, if you're an aspiring actor today, there's a high chance that you'd be required to learn about improv and the ability to think up scenes or add them on a whim. And if you're looking for an additional reason to take improv seriously, you may want to consider the fact that it played a huge role in the success of Pretty Woman. To begin with, consider one of the most iconic scenes of the film, the part where Edward gives Vivian a necklace as she steps out with him. Vivian comes into his room all dressed up, and while she's looking stunning, he claims that there's still something left in her ensemble. Then he goes ahead and does this. Something in this box. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. Now, according to reports, this scene was actually improvised. The script had Vivian touching the necklace slightly before Edward places it on her neck, and they both admire how it looks. However, the slamming of the box was actually improvised by Richard Gere, and Julia Roberts' broad laughter was completely real because she never saw it coming. The director of the movie eventually loved that scene so much because it reflected Edward's playful side, as well as the fact that he had actually began to grow fond of Vivian. And so, he went on to place it in the movie instead of casting it to the side as a blooper. Oh, and on a side note, apparently that necklace was actually worth a fortune. According to some reports, it was actually made by a French jeweler and went for a staggering $250,000. The necklace featured 23 pearl-cut rubies, all set in beautiful hearts and diamonds, and with such an insane price tag, it should come as no small wonder that it literally had to be guarded by security officials at all times while on the set. No one wants such a pricey diamond going missing for sure. Now you may be wondering why the filmmakers would have something so expensive on their set, but sometimes, as a filmmaker, it's important for you to have such attention to detail as possible with your props. And that goes double when you have a necklace that's worth a quarter of a million dollars to feature in the movie, even if it does pose a huge risk of theft. I guess that's the price that you've got to pay. Another scene that showed the power of improv in the movie was the part where Vivian was singing along to the famous track Kiss by Prince while in the jacuzzi. All of a sudden, Edward walks in and asks her to be his date to an event. I just want your extra time and your... Now, while you might think that this was just Julia Roberts being a little extra for the role, it appears that she actually was just being a natural. She didn't know that the cameras had been rolling the whole time, and she had been listening to the song on her Walkman. And so, when she realized that filming had begun, she just continued on with it. It's not bad for an improv actor, I'd have to say. Not bad at all. Butterflies in the Stomach Considering that Pretty Woman was a romantic movie, you'd imagine that there were many love scenes in the flick, and to be fair, it did have its fair share of steamy scenes. However, what you might not have known was that filming many of those scenes was not so easy. As I pointed out before, Julia Roberts was only a rookie actress at best when it came to filming Pretty Woman, but on the other hand, Richard Gere had had a pretty solid career already. So when the time came for the two of them to shoot some of their love scenes, Julia had found it difficult just adapting to the entire thing. Couple this with the fact that she had never really shot a love scene in her career, and you kind of understand why the entire thing would be a bit of a challenge for her. Still though, if you saw the movie, you would never have imagined that she'd ever have such an issue. Richard the Talented Now it's no secret that Richard Gere was a very capable actor. I mean, why else? Would the producers of the movie ask him several times, and even ask Julia to go and convince him? However, while Richard's acting chops were all on display, he had also showcased another impressive talent that he had, and that was playing the piano. If you recall, there was a scene in Pretty Woman where Vivian found Edward playing the piano in the hotel lobby. Now, according to reports, the director had actually been looking to cast a body double for Richard to play the role. 
However, the actor surprised everyone when he sat down in front of the piano and began playing a beautiful rendition. Even more interesting, the tune that he actually played was one of his originals. As it turns out, Richard had played several musical instruments in his younger years, and he was especially skilled at playing the piano and the trumpet in his high school days. It looks like those talents eventually came in handy. The Disastrous Bathtub Scene Speaking of that iconic scene in the bathtub, Julia recounted years later that it wasn't quite as glamorous as it seemed. According to the actress, the bathtub that they had used for the scene was full of a lot of washing detergent, you know, to make the bubbles and other effects. However, the soap ended up having an effect on Julia's hair for real. As she would explain, the next day after having filmed the scene, she found that her hair color had faded significantly, and some of it was even chopped. And so, she had to spend extra time at the hair salon to re-dye the hair before she could even continue with the movie. I'm not sure why they didn't use an actual bubble bath and save the poor lady all that stress. Perhaps they had spent most of that budget on that sweet French design necklace. Tough Crowd Now, while Julia had definitely been passionate about making Pretty Woman, it appeared that she was famously tough to please, or even get a laugh out of. It was reportedly tough to get her to laugh genuinely in the movie, and in several scenes where the director needed her to laugh and give that wide-faced smile, she just couldn't seem to muster it. As a result, there were several scenes where the director would literally have to cut and tickle her to make her laugh. Now that you consider that, it's kind of easy to see why Richard Gere had to improvise that jewelry scene, and at the end of the day, it definitely came out beautifully, at least considering how well the movie was received. I think Julia can afford to smile about it years on. Pretty Woman's Impressive Legacy Do I look okay? Mm. Hmm? Something's missing. All in all, Pretty Woman was definitely a huge hit at the theaters, and while the movie was definitely a long way from having the perfect filmmaking process, I think that we can all agree that it ended up being quite the beautiful film. Despite the fact that it had a pretty controversial initial subject, it then went on to be a commercial and economic success, costing about $14 million to make, but grossing $463 million worldwide at the box office. In fact, at the time of its release, Pretty Woman was the fourth highest grossing film of all time, coming in only behind Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, Star Wars, and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Stay. Stay the night with me. Not because I'm paying you, but because you want to. To date, the movie remains one of the top three highest grossing romantic comedies in American history, falling behind only Hitch and What Women Want. Considering that it was made in 1990 and has managed to hold that number three spot for all these years, this is absolutely no mean feat. What are you, my pimp now? You know, you think you can just pass me around to your friends? I'm not some little toy. You should also consider Pretty Woman's impact on the careers of its cast and crew members. The film's main screenwriter, J.F. Lawton, got a nomination for a BAFTA Award and a Writers Guild Award, but it was Julia Roberts who broke out as a result of her participation. She received a Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy, and even a nomination for the Academy Award in the Best Actress category. Come and visit us again sometime. Stay cool. Richard Gere, the movie's leading man, had already made quite the name for himself prior to filming Pretty Woman, so it really only did more to burnish his reputation in the eyes of fans and critics. On your own, I have to go back to work. You look great. She has my card. And we'll help her use it, sir. Plus, it also helped that he was quite a Hollywood hunk. It's not bad considering that they both could have easily not been in the movie in the first place. Pretty Woman's status as a classic rom-com can't be disputed, and as time goes on, I think we could all learn even more about the movie. But which of these facts has surprised you thus far? Would you have gotten a $250,000 necklace on your movie set? And do you think improv was the key to Pretty Woman's success? Let me know about it in the comments below, subscribe to this channel, and like this video for more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.